Welcome back to Dominique Prenet's course on celestial navigation. My name is John Pinto, and today we're going to be taking a look at the spherical triangle and how it relates to the site reduction tables that we will be using. Again, again, my name is John Pinto, and I'm an amateur astronomer and a mathematician, and I'll be presenting Dominique's course for you. Dominique's course uh, is contained in his book, Celestial Navigation, and the accompanying exercise book, uh, which I encourage you to, to get both of those. Uh, you can even download the exercise book from the website, marinenavigationbooks.com, along with learning where you could order the books and also uh, get a copy of this slide deck that this presentation is using. Before we go on, I want to just uh, mention that in the exercise book, there's a section called Home Session 1, exercises 59 through 69, which you're encouraged to, to do. Uh, it covers all the material we've, we've covered so far up to this point, and so it will be good review practice for you. On to the site reduction tables and the spherical triangle. So... <clears throat> We need to just go back to some of our earlier episodes uh, where we talked about, you know, what is the purpose of celestial navigation? And the purpose is to help you determine where you are on the Earth when all you have are sights of the sun or the moon, stars and planets. And the way that this works is it relies on this thing called the spherical triangle. Let me just put my laser pointer on here for you. Um, <clears throat> So here you are with your boat, and let's say you're observing the sun, and you uh, determine it's got a certain height above uh, your horizon. If you remember in that earlier episode, we talked about that um, this distance here from your boat to the, to the uh, geographical point or the uh, geographic position or ground point of the object you're observing, in this case the sun, is actually your zenith distance. And that's just 90 degrees minus the um, height that you measure the sun at. And again, if you remember back to those early episodes, that helps you determine a line of position on the Earth, which is mainly a very large circle on the Earth. And we're gonna show you later on how you can make use of that to determine where you are. But the critical thing is to know how far away you are from the sun and how high the sun is uh, above the earth from where you are. So if you know your latitude, okay, and you know you, the declination of the object you're observing, in this case, we're going to use the sun, um, with those two pieces of information, you can draw this little triangle here from where your boat is up to the pole that you are closest to. In this example, we're closest to the North Pole. And from the sun, you can draw this um, side of the triangle, um, again, from the sun to the, the pole that's closest to you. And uh, again, from a previous episode, you know how we calculated uh, LHA, which is uh, a measure of the distance from your boat to the west to the object you're observing. So in the morning, right, which would be a morning site, um, that's going to be uh, a angle that goes all the way around the earth to this side. But easy enough to, once you know that, to know what this angle is. Now, this angle has actually got a name. It's called the meridian angle, uh, but you don't have to worry about that. Um, you just need to know what the LHA is, and um, this um, angle here is very simple to figure out. It's obviously either going to be your LHA, if it's an evening site or an afternoon site, or it's going to be 360 minus that. But again, you don't have to worry about that. Um, just know that this angle here is determined uh, from just knowing the LHA, which we you've calculated in previous episodes. Um, so once you have this triangle, okay, from uh, those measurements, right, your latitude, declination, and LHA, um, the site reduction tables basically just are a uh, table of solutions to this triangle, given this side, which you can get from latitude, this side, which you can get from declination, and the angle between them, which you can get from LHA. 
And then what they do is they solve the triangle um, like you would have done in a high school geometry or trigonometry um, using slightly different formulas because we're, we're, we're on a sphere, we're not on a flat plane. But if the calculations are fairly simple, similar. And what those tables tell you is they tell you from your boat what is the direction to where your um, object uh, um, geographic position is and called azimuth. And it also actually gives you sort of what this distance is, right? So you could do that uh, line of position. But it does it in a, in, a, in a way that's much simpler for us. It just gives us what the height would be above the Earth, where you are. And you're going to see later on that just knowing that uh, and knowing what you uh, um, measured the height to be, you'll actually get a very good idea of where the line of position is in relation to into relation to your boat. So uh, again, latitude, declination, LHA, give us this side, this side, and it helps to tell us what this angle is here. And all the site reduction tables are is a big table of solutions to triangles with various values for latitude, declination, and LHA. Pretty simple. So just to um, reiterate and to just make it clear in your mind, um, once you're given a boat latitude, the latitude for the sun's GP, which we all know is called declination, and the sun's LHA, or whatever object you're observing, it's LHA, from the boat, we can draw that spherical triangle between the nearest pole to the boat, the boat, and the sun's GP. And again, what does this, a reduction table do for us? What they do is they solve that triangle for the azimuth angle called Z and the height above the horizon from where you are called height calculated. Um, and again, this is all, all prefigured out for you. You don't really have to think about it. Uh, this is just to introduce you to what the site reduction tables are doing for you and why they need that spherical triangle to figure it out. Um, you just give it, um, go back one. You just give it the latitude, declination, LHA, site reduction tables, figure everything else out for you. Another thing to know about the, the site reduction tables and the spherical triangle is that the tables work no matter where you are on the earth because they don't depend on your longitude, only the LHA, which is really just a relative position from where your boat is to the geographic position of the object you're observing. In, in, in our case, it's going to be the sun. So you could be, you know, at 150 degrees and the sun's at 180 degrees. That's a 30 degree LHA. The same tables work if you're at 90 degrees and you're at, and the GP is at 120 degrees. Again, it's that same 30 degree LHA. That's all that matters. Um, <clears throat> Once you give it that, the tables will apply anywhere around the Earth, and even doesn't matter what hemisphere you're in, North or South Hemisphere works the same. You don't need, you know, a separate table for Northern Hemisphere versus the Southern Hemisphere. Uh, it's all all contained in one set of site reduction tables. So next week, when we get back here uh, with episode 20, we're going to actually dive into those site reduction tables. We'll show you what they look like and show you uh, initially how you pull out that azimuth angle called Z and how you convert that into an actual compass bearing of the sun called ZN. All right, it's going to be an exciting uh, next bunch of couple of weeks as we actually get into the site reduction tables and we start uh, figuring out where we are on the face of the earth. Looking forward to seeing you next week. Take care and have a good night.